Welcome back to the laboratory. I'm glad that you could make it. Uh, this is the third part in the series of lectures that, uh, that we're giving on uh, GeoBlue Crete uh, 2, uh, GeoBlue Crete 3, and, and coatings material. Um, we really need to start in a way for you to understand uh, what we're talking about when we talk about this new substance, this hybrid between a uh, uh, polymer and, and nanoceramic material that we can use as an alternative uh, to, to Portland's cement. Um, concrete itself is, is, very, is very interesting in that it has served us well. I don't want to to knock it, but it's not serving our planet well. The, the issue is uh, really, really boils down to the amount of carbon dioxide that is released and the amount of heavy metals and other toxins that is released in the manufacture of Portland cement. Um, if it was not for uh, the chemistry itself, uh, in, the, in, the, in the process of, of, of making limestone and heating it up uh, into a clinker material, um, I don't think that we would be so interested in finding an alternative. But as we pollute our planet more and more, we need to find alternatives to those things which really are, 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 are really choking the life out of our good earth. Um, it wasn't so important uh, in the 1800s and 1700s and the 1600s and, and before that uh, because fossil fuel burning wasn't at, at the height that it is right now. Uh, and there was plenty of fossil fuels to use. Uh, at this moment in time, when we burn fossil fuels in the manufacture of different items, and particularly right now we're talking about concrete, uh, uh, cement rather, we are releasing for every metric ton of cement about 1.25 metric tons of carbon dioxide in the air and those heavy metals and toxins that I spoke about earlier. That's dangerous. When you think to un, when you when you really think and you really understand that progress in our world is really measured by the buildings we build, the roads we build, the bridges that we put up, the tunnels that we dig, that's our progress. That's what we call civilization. And as we begin to progress more and more, we're building more and more, and we're depending upon a product called Portland cement. It's the sheer volume itself, the second large, largest bought and sold product in the world today, other than water, that Portland creates for us an incredible pollution problem to here on, on our planet. And it's for that very reason that the technologies of our company were placed at, and challenged to try and come up with superior products to, to Portland and products that would be clean and green to, to our, our planet. In fact, so green that we've called the product blue. In the periphery of, of companies out there and technologies out there that claim to be green, uh, we didn't want to be confused with any of them. We wanted our company to stand out for what it really is, a truly environmentally friendly product, a blue product, as blue as our oceans and as blue as our skies should be. Well, let's talk about the product itself. I've said to you and tried to, to get you to understand how important it is for us to have, based upon the sheer volume of usage and, 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 and the sheer amount that's manufactured each year, how important it really is to have a clean product. Well, what makes this product clean? What makes this product green? And as we've described it, what makes it blue? 
Uh, the product is really made of post-industrial waste material. There's no, um, there's no necessary burning of any fossil fuels in the manufacture of the product itself. It's simply a mix. If you had a big paddle mixer and you put this, this material in and this material in and this material in and mixed it up, you would have our product. It's a mix albeit that the mix is proprietary uh, and, and it is, of course is, is a mix in which we license to other people but it's a very simple mix of simple natural materials uh, that basically form the basis of, of our product. Our product is not dependent on the petrochemical field it is not it doesn't go up and down with the prices of, of, of petrochemicals um, our product is about as natural as natural could be. It does have in the mix um, post-industrial waste materials, has fly ash in it, has slag in it, as many geopolymers do, but very little. And basically, uh, we could, if we wanted to, substitute other materials uh, for, uh, for that, that particular mix. Very natural ma materials, volcanic rock, could be substituted for it. Big gas could be substituted for it. Uh, burnt rust, rice husk could be substituted. Burnt bamboo, burnt sugar cane. The ashes of each of these organic materials is very rich in alumina silica, and the alumina silica is something is the, is the chemistry that we take advantage of. Now, alumina silica is very natural material. Uh, you find it in volcanic rock, as I mentioned to you earlier. Uh, our planet is covered with, with this kind of material. So the, 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 the issue of, of having enough material in order to create our product uh, is not an issue at all. The, the materials, the raw materials we need in order to manufacture our, our, our concrete are amply uh, available. Well, I said I was going to describe to you something about our product and so far I don't, think I, I don't think I've carried that out. So let me now turn my conversation to explain to you that, the, that, that our product takes advantage of a very important chemical um, uh, action on the atomic level. It's an exothermic reaction. In other words, you mix our material at, at ambient temperatures and when you mix it together and you put water in it, water is the catalyst for it, uh, there is a change in the material on the atomic level and it in essence is reaching out <clears throat> to other materials in the mix and taking their electrons and giving electrons off and so what it's forming is covalent bonds. The material that, 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 is, that is created by us is a material that is a covalently bonded material having aggregates in it like rock and stone and sand and that covalently bonded material is much stronger than a material which really depends upon layers and layers of being pasted alongside of aggregate material which is concrete. So the difference between concrete and, the, and our material, Geo Blue 2 and 3, is basically the, the, at the atomic level, at the, at the molecule level. And what we're talking about is, uh, is in one case a paste, and in the other we're talking about an, uh, an atomic exchange, an electron exchange, covalent bonding. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you in our next lecture.